8 volts or 14.5 volts. Your car doesn't like to take your car battery over 14 volts because there's no, you can't, you'll boil it away. Mm -hmm. So the real question is how much charge is in those batteries, right? Well, that's why in, we suck 200 amps out of them in the beginning okay. with this. So we, for the appropriate amount of time, we suck 200 amps out of this one, 200 out of this one, 200 out of this one. So what we could do is if we want the energy and we want to recycle this energy, right? All we need is standard inverter here and it's to a, a power supply here mm -hmm. and then just send it back here and do it perfectly. Yeah, okay. Just like your old motors. Yes, yeah. but with much more efficiency. Right. And that's what we want to have happen with this. Now, if we make this capacitor bank here bigger, right, then the current will increase here. So right now, I wanted to have, you know, when I first started this morning with it, when you guys came in and it was running, mm -hmm. It, it was doing, you know, five to seven amp pulses. Then we went to dinner, mm -hmm. shut the machine off. We came back, the batteries kept charging. Yeah. This is exactly what Tom Bearden's talking about when you do this kind of time charge on the battery. So that's basically an explanation of the machine and what the functions of the machine are. So what's that box there? This is the uh, this is the the controller mm -hmm. for that timing wheel on the back to fire the impulse. Okay. And all the energy that comes back from these coils, right, mm -hmm. is dumped out of here to this capacitor over here. See? Okay. So it dumps to this capacitor, and then. In, in this box is a, is a switch mm -hmm. that when it sees this charge, this dump, it fires and sends the energy to the battery. As you can see, when you push that switch down. Now, yeah. now look where the meter is, Pat. Yeah, I know. And this is at 40.7 too. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, why would I worry about charging any batteries? There it is. Right. You know, you can see what the efficiency is. We didn't run it very long. Right. And it's it's all in this, on tape here. So very little input in spikes and very large output in the phi current. Mm -hmm. So we were able to meter it. By the way, this is inverted circuits. What's that this, this is what's discussed in 30 years, Bearden and Bedini, right? Inverted circuits, because this is an inverted circuit and it comes in on the negative. Okay. And this one comes, comes out on the positive. So it's inverted, and see where it just jumped? So that, yeah. The, the battery is under charge, right. see? And notice where this battery is. That's the recovery battery. And here's the primary battery. See? Mm -hmm. We're just now approaching the green. Because we've been using the machine. Right. But what's very important is that right there. Is what it's doing to those batteries. See it this it's bouncing it's bouncing this. It's tapering you off. Know what this is too. Sure. And this is the charge battery. See it's bouncing. Right. Inversely proportional to that.
And there's your primary again. This is tapering off because this is at 42 volts now. Mm -hmm. So the batteries aren't requiring any current from the machine. So basically, Pat, the machine's running wild right now. But servoed, because it's in this magnetic lock. Well, the machine is running wild, basically wants to run, right? Wants to take off and go. But we're limiting it because of this generator now. We're holding the machine under a torque load. We start at 38.4. Yeah. We're rising to 42.8, 0.9, 0.9, the watch pop in the bones. I know, but I just wanted him to catch that. It's actually 43 volts. That meter's like five off. Mm -hmm. Because it's slammed here. That's 30. That's almost 45. 43.0. Yeah. Oh, it's going to go. It's going to go up. Okay, so we're at 43.1. We're at 14.36 right now on each battery. So they have blank. Yes. Uh, John, I, I have a question, um, <clears throat> which may not be relevant, but does this relate at all to the motor that Jim Watson built and which he showed at the Tesla Symposium 20-something years ago? I mean, is this yes, except that Jim, this would be depicted as Jim Watson's generator. Right. This, this part. And this would be depicted as Jim Watson's aircraft generator. Now, one important thing that I forgot to tell you is Watson, Jim Watson didn't have the capability, he may have it now underground somewhere, but didn't have the capability of being able to do the regaging in the generator. So this is far superior to his machine and that it's burning no current, and he had to use a jet aircraft starter to get that big mask on. But all we have to do is flip a switch and change the magnetic fields, and the mass starts rotating and starts outputting to recharge the batteries. And like we filmed earlier on, you can just, it's already at 40 volts. And so it's pushing those batteries up there. But the thing that it is doing, Tony, is it's conditioning these batteries with a time charge. So if you measure these batteries and you measure these batteries, these batteries don't have this sustaining power of these. So we don't have to depend on a great big gigantic flywheel. We're actually pushing the flywheel with magnetic streams. Right around here. So we shape the magnetic field by shaping it by bending this iron, right? Right. And so what we want to do is we want to ride the magnetic stream. How, how many magnetic streams are there? I mean, There's 16. Yeah. You know, and depicted, I think, in the Coral Castle stuff, there's 16 more magnetic streams. The Coral, it, the Scandals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said ring the bell twice. What does that mean? Drop through the zero. The zero potential. Yeah, drop through the zero potential and there's the energy. Oh, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's exactly what we're doing. And that's exactly what Tom Bearden was saying is the phi, right? Right. Current is a zero current. Yeah. Massless. It's magnetic. It's magnetricity. Right. That's what it is. It's all magnetism. 
So, so these, these 16 streams, wasn't that also in the Sumerian tablets? Or it, yeah, it was in the Sumerian text. It yeah, was so, Masonic so temples. Yeah. It's always depicted with the star with 16 major streams. I think, you know, there, were, there there's quite a few people on the internet that made us, the 144 code, the, the numbers come out right. right. And nobody has done has gathered this kind of energy with it. Right. 144 codes, the website. Yeah. yeah. And, and the guy's right. It's just he hasn't got the energy. So this is the timing plate on the back of the... Board. Right. This is the timing wheel on the back of the machine. You're facing the front when we're looking at it in this video but this is on the back and you can see that there are 16 if you count them 16 magnetic poles all south the disc sort of looks like this but it has 16 poles so these are identical with the exception that this one has to be big because you need to get the 16 one inch round magnets all the way around this and that's running the hall device on the back there's a little hall device that's that's in the back and we'll get we'll, we'll show it in another picture so that yes that is your timing device and over here it's kind of hard to see but you can see a, there's sort of a red cast here see it right there Right, right, in, right, right in here. Right. Those are marked off with a protractor in degrees. So the magnet is set to be, when it fires this motor, at exactly 23 degrees past. Okay, John, now, can, can you go through what, 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 what's going on here? Okay. This here is... A radius motor. This works identically to what the astronauts shoes that's depicted on Tom Bearden's internet site. This is Raymond Radis that used to work. Yes, for, Raymond Radis used to work for NASA. Right. So to make this motor work. It requires that you, you need a magnet with a memory. So that's a barium, barium ferrite magnet. And so we'll, we'll go back and I'll show you the disk for that. So we're going to come up on this a little bit. Okay, a little bit better view. Yeah. On the back, back here, right, right in here, these poles there's a hole drilled through the wood because there's a diamagnetic material, which is the wood, and then there's a magnetic material behind it. So this is a, a steel plate, eighth inch steel plate, that is filling the entire space of this piece of wood with a two inch hole cut here. Now notice here, right here, you see this circle? That fits the exact spacing so that when this magnet spins, it goes through this arc so that it gets the travel of the exact one inch on this plate. But used in this one, in this, the one that's in there right now, there's a half inch magnet because we had too much travel and we couldn't get the shoe to release. It tried to overlap each time and pull backwards. So you have to have the correct spike to switch the barium ferrite magnet into a memory effect which at that point in time shakes. Because, remember, it's almost built like a pancake. 
Okay, so we've seen the mountain.